So in this question, we're focused on what does the beta measure in the capital asset pricing model, right? And look how they capitalize the beta. Big and strong, right? Well, I don't know why, but it is important that we understand why. So the capital asset pricing model, we can see it's used to calculate the cost of retained earnings. And this is part of the company's weighted average cost of capital, right? And there's the beta. We multiply it by the market risk premium. So the market risk premium is independent of a company, right? You have the market return minus the risk-free rate, but then we multiply it by the beta, which is specific to a company to calculate the company's market risk premium, right? So based on the risk profile of this company, when we multiply it by the market risk premium, we now understand the overall increase in required return based on this specific company, right? So the beta, it's a critical component of the capital asset pricing model. Now you'll remember this visual from the lecture, right? And overall, what the beta tells us is the volatility relative to the overall stock market, right? So if the stock market goes up, well then the beta will go up by more than one. If it goes hand in hand, meaning the stock market goes up or down 5%, and so does the company, right? Exactly 5%. I mean, their beta is equal to one. And then if it's less than one, that means they don't move as much as the market, right? And this is really just volatility, right? So we wanna understand just how risky this company is and how much movement there's gonna be if there's a change in the overall market. So that just kind of helps us understand the risk profile when assessing the required rate of return or the cost of retained earnings. But overall, it's just focused on what does the beta mean here? And that is the volatility of a stock relative to the market, right? So that's gonna be the correct answer.